this um, presentation is basically about Melissa, the teacher, in process of trying to learn how to get herself and her students into what Paulo Freire, Paulo Freire calls praxis, which is reflection and action in the world. And that process actually started for me personally, pedagogically, about 10 years ago when I was first introduced to Freire's work. And slowly I started to incorporate him more and more. And as I started to, quote, teach him, I started to learn more than I ever could have imagined. And about a year and a half ago, I started to really take into heart the idea of connecting with my students what was happening in the class outside of the class more explicitly because I felt like that was really there was a great sense of alienation with my students between what was happening here and and what was happening in the quote real world and in their lives and in their existential experience so I had been working with things like personal narrative and having them use their life experiences as objects of reflection but the connection between the world and the classroom just didn't seem to be really happening that was made really explicit to me painfully explicit actually when I first made an attempt to teach a class on genocide. Mm -hmm. And I'm lucky enough to be working at North Seattle where the English 102 classes, which is analytical writing, we're allowed to, th not allowed, we need to theme them. And I had started working initially with the theme of identity construction. I taught classes for several years on that theme. Like how, how do we, how do we come about a sense of who we are, of self? And one of the texts that I worked with in doing that was Susan Griffin's text, A Chorus of Stones and more specifically one of the chapters called Our Secret. And in that text she explores many things. I mean that text is absolutely amazing. It's like a, a word tapestry where you pull a thread through and pull it th and then pretty soon this image emerges and it's breathtaking. And one of the things that she does is she explores how Heinrich Himmler formed his sense of self. And in working with that and at the same time working with Freire, it just kind of started to organically grow. It started to, I started to really recognize the impact not just of the self-identity but also how we identify others you know and the, and the consequences that happen when those two things collide so that is what kind of led me into to, uh, genocide and war because I was working with Heinrich Himmler and those kinds of things and then also there was of course Darfur was happening and I would mention Darfur and get a blank stare from our blank response from people and I found that increasingly disturbing Susan Griffin talks about several core terms. One of them is complicity. And that's been something that I've really been struggling with for a long, long time, which is, of course, the failure to act when doing so would prevent harm for self and others. And I was just really struggling with that. I'm feeling complicit, I guess, myself to a certain extent, feeling like just talking about it simply is not enough. There needs to be something more. So I taught this class on genocide for the first time, and I, it's painful to look back on it how little I knew. Although, hey, at least I tried. <laughs> Um, and the big lesson came at the end of the class when I was talking to my students about it, we were reflecting on the term, and one of my students expressed how hopeless she felt and how, you know, she was glad to be introduced to this information in a way, but in another way she didn't feel so happy about it because she felt so utterly powerless. And in reflecting on that, that's when I really realized I can't do that again. I have to make sure that there, there's, that I, that I help my students leave with a sense of feeling empowered to actually do something in the world. So that's kind of how all of this started. So I then taught, the next time that I taught the uh, genocide course at North Seattle was last fall term. And I put out, a, a, I just said, hey, listen, you know, this is going to be really disturbing, difficult information, but we can also do something real in the world. So if you would like to, voluntary, not official service learning, we can do something. I had some really uh, excellent involvement from a couple of students, one in particular, and then a few other people kind of got on board. And we were able to do a presentation. We actually worked with the Southern Sudanese community of Washington. We had a speaker come who had experienced what happened in Sudan. And he talked to us about that on, on campus. So it was at the Baxter Event Center. Anyone could come. We passed out flyers. We had a bake sale to raise money for the Southern Sudanese community of Washington. And that was the first project. I then, oh, this is Solomon here. Solomon, this is everybody. <laughs> Another student from North Seattle, also from Ethiopia, that's that day. And so that was my first experience of kind of putting myself and my students out there and saying, hey, let's start a dialogue here. And it was, it was really successful in a sense, but you know, it's the beginning of, for me, it's just learning how to do that more 
and not just have myself do it, my or my students do it, but to really get more and more and more people engaged in, in that dialogue. So the next term I did something at Edmonds and I've been continuing and it, now it's kind of an addiction. I, I feel like if I, <laughs> if I don't make an effort to get my students engaged with what's happening in the classroom, outside the classroom, I feel you know, like I haven't really done my job.